And we're gonna start with the back yoke and the back main body, and we're gonna put these together. Now, when we sew up your muslin mock-up for testing the jean patterns, we're gonna do a lot of the same exact sewing that you're gonna do eventually in final fabric. So we're gonna have all of the raw edges hiding to the inside of the pants. We'll finish a few of these edges just so they're clean. And then one of the things I wanna show you is on this back yoke panel, we're gonna do a flat fell seam so the, all of the raw edges are hidden inside of there. And this is what you're gonna do in final fabric also. This is the reason why we're using a three quarter inch seam allowance here on the back yoke and the top of the main back pants. We need to sew these wrong sides together. So let's make sure we know which side that is now. Now take your, out your pants and do the same thing I've done here where I have the right sides facing up and this is my back yoke and this is the back seam. This is center back on the yoke, center back on the yoke. And you can see that these are with the correct sides facing up. Again, we're gonna sew these wrong sides together. So we need the yoke to be on the inside of the back of the pants. Now let's take a closer look at one of these. If you come in here and you just line up your notches, and at three quarters of an inch, if you start walking towards the back, you're gonna notice that the two corners here from the main body and here from the yoke, they don't line up, and this is correct. Where it does line up is the raw edge at three quarters of an inch. Now, just so we don't make a mistake on that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the three quarters of an inch allowance here on the yoke, and I'll draw it again here on the main body. All right, so do the same thing with me now. Take out one pair of one side of your legs. So for instance, this is her right side, this is the back, and I have it correct side up. And then here is my yoke panel. This is also correct side up. And here's center backs, and here's the side seams. What we're gonna do is here on the yoke, on the correct side up, let's go ahead and draw in the three quarters inch seam allowance. Now I'm gonna come over here to my main body of my pants, and I have this with the wrong side up. And I'm gonna draw in my three quarters of inch seam allowance here as well. Now something else that I'm gonna want is, here's my center back crotch. And just for a short distance, I wanna have my half inch seam allowance. And the main thing I'm looking for is where these two cross each other. Then I'm gonna come back here to the center back of my yoke panel. And again, this is with the correct side up. And I'll draw in the half inch seam allowance. So here I can see where it's crossing over. Okay, so do this with me now. So here's my back panel wrong side up. This is my yoke panel with the correct side up, so I'm putting these wrong sides together. Now you can see we're gonna start here at the side seam. We're gonna sew along the three quarters of an inch. We're gonna match the notches, and we'll continue all the way here to the end. And you wanna make sure that this intersection right here should match perfectly right on top of that intersection right there. That is the most important part of sewing this together. And then you'll notice as you go all the way out here to the raw edge, the raw edges are perfectly touching right there, even though this is cut at an angle and the tips are not matching. So this is correct. Just make sure that you're hitting this location. So now what I've done is I've lined up the side seam here at the three quarters of an inch of a seam allowance and I pinned this in place. 
don't continue pinning it all the way through here. You need to pivot this while you're sewing on the sewing machine. Make sure your notches match and keep pivoting it all the way to where you're making sure that that intersection matches. But for now, only pin it right here to hold this in place until you start sewing. Now take out the other back leg and yoke and let's do this together as well. So I have both of them right side up and I need to sew the yoke wrong sides together with the back. Let's go ahead and turn this over. Now what I've done is here on the correct side of the yoke, I've drawn in my three quarters of an inch seam allowance plus this little half inch at the back so I can find this intersection right here. The wrong side of my pants, I've drawn in the three quarter inch seam allowance plus the half inch at the back so I have the same intersection there. Now on this pattern piece we can come in here and we can line up that intersection. So I put a pin through from the back right at that intersection. And then I bring in my yoke and I get the pin to go through that intersection as well. And then I can line up the raw edges here, the raw edges there. Once I know everything is in place, I'll pin these two pieces together and I'll take that pin out. So now when I go over to the sewing machine, I can start sewing from the raw edge all the way through. And then I'll pivot this on the sewing machine, making sure my mat I match the notches and all the way here to the side seam. Sew these at 12 stitches per inch, no back tack at the beginning, no back tack at the end. When you're finished sewing, make sure that the Seams are relaxed and you don't have any tension. If there is any tension, make sure you adjust your machine now. Now also, we just finished sewing this curve. This is now a three-dimensional object, so do not press these flat and don't put any weight on this. The shaping for the seam now used to be darts, and this is what's going to cup along your backside and up into your hips. So we need to maintain this 3D shape from this point forward. All right, what we're gonna do next is come over to the main body. So this is the main body pant. And for the seam allowance of the main body, go ahead and draw a line at 3 eighths of an inch. So this is half of your seam allowance. And again, this is only on the main body seam allowance. So I'm going to cut that seam allowance in half. But I'm not going to cut the yoke seam allowance. What we're going to do is we're going to fold the yoke seam allowance in half over the top of this main body seam allowance. So here you can see that the yoke seam allowance is going up and over and it's folding over the main body seam allowance that we cut in half. Let's go ahead and steam and press this in place and make sure you can still see the blue stitching all the way through or else you folded the seam allowance too much. Now after you've steamed and pressed the yoke seam allowance on top of the main body seam allowance, then we're going to continue pressing all of the seam allowance heading down towards the main body. Be sure to do this work on a ham because this is now a three-dimensional object. Once you finish pressing this, then let's go ahead and put an edge stitch on here 
to hold this flap down and you'll see it's hiding all of the raw edges here to the outside of the main body. So now that I've sewn in the edge stitching and I've closed that flap, you can see there's no raw edges on either side. Also, the width of this top stitch now is 3 eighths of an inch, which was half of our seam allowance, which was 3 quarters. If you wanted this top stitch to be a different width, you would make a different size seam allowance at the beginning of the pattern making. Now that we have a 3 8 double top stitch here, you'll want to keep in mind if you do a double top stitch at the crotch seam, it should be 3 8 here in the front. If you do it a double top stitch here at the zipper, the insides of the pockets, you might want to consider to have 3 8 all the way around. You'll notice here though in production, they do use a smaller distance for the pockets, the zipper, and the back pocket here, and then they're using the 3 8 on more of the construction seams. So you'll decide as a sample sewer and pattern maker and as a designer what width you want for your flat fell seam. Now that we finished the flat fell seam, just always remember that this is a 3D object and you do not want to press this flat and you do not want to crush this. What I'm going to do is when I handle my pants, I'm going to put these together and I'm going to allow that curve to stay as it is. Now since we're working on the backs, I want to go ahead and put in my back pocket. For me, I'm only doing one back pocket and I want to do it on the wearer's right side of the body. So do this with me now. Take out your back pant, correct side up, and the crotch seam and center back should be here on your left hand side. What we're going to do is we're going to make a pocket that will go and sew down right here. All right, let's start working on this pocket. Okay, taking a look at your pocket with the correct side up. Up here at the very top, this is our half inch seam allowance that we want to hide. So we're going to tuck that under going towards the wrong side. And let's go ahead and finger press this at exactly half of an inch. Now the next thing we're going to do is the fold line right here, which is the top of your pocket. We're going to actually fold this coming towards us. If it helps, you can come here to the wrong side and from notch to notch, you can lightly draw in that fold line here on the wrong side. Then we can fold this perfect right along that fold line, making sure you're going right to the notches on both sides and gently finger press this because later on we're going to reverse the fold in the other direction. Now when I come here to the right side up, I can see that this is folding together, right sides together. And then I want to pin these edges in place so they don't move. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to sew, starting with a back tack, following along your half inch down to this corner, to the point the other corner, and all the way back and finish with a back tack. If you feel like your sewing is a little bit uneven and you don't trust yourself completely, you can always come in here and use a pencil and a ruler first as a guideline. Now that you've sewn it together, what we're going to do is up here we're going to clip this corner, but be sure not to clip too close to the threads right there and do the same thing on the other side. Now down here where we have this half of an inch is sticking out, we're going to clip that corner as well. Okay, so now what I've done is I've steamed and pressed under all of my seam allowances. Basically I pressed one of the bottom edges first, the other one second, and then I finished with doing each of the two long edges. So you can see that I did these last. That's going to hold everything nicely in place. 
Now what I'm ready to do is I'm ready to turn this inside out just like a collar. What I like to do is I'll hold my scissors right at the corner and I'll have my thumb on the inside of the pocket. And then I can poke that corner out. Okay, so I've turned my corners to the outside. Now I'm going to go ahead and steam and press that fold in place. Once you've steamed and pressed it, then you can go ahead and do your top stitching on here. Basically what I did is I started right along the edge stitch, came all the way along to here, back, edge stitch down, pivot, back to the point, and back over to here. And then I finished by edge stitching up one more time. Now all of the strings and stuff, you don't want to see this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it here to the inside and I'm going to cut it off on the inside of my pocket. All right, now that I have the pocket all finished and ready to go, it's time to put it in its place here on the back. Now, since we cut this by hand, sewed it by hand, pressed it by hand, we have our original markings here on our pants, but maybe it's slightly off or a little bit asymmetrical. So don't try to force it and hit every little pinpoint or else you're gonna have some tension on, your, on the main body. Let's start here by getting the point at the bottom lined up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin this to the body first then I'll come over here and I'll pin it through the pocket to the body second. So you can see it's pinned here at the body and here going all the way through. So from the back side you'll see it's pinned twice. Now once I have that pinned I can move the pocket back and forth to make sure it's lining up at the top edges and these corners down here. Now let's pin these two corners here the same way. First put the pin in the body and then put the pin into the corner of the pocket. So here you can see I've pinned it at the main body and then through all layers. And I'm also going at a 45 degree angle here and a 45 degree angle there. Now remembering that the back of your pants now is a three dimensional object. We don't want to just pin this flat to the tabletop. What we need to do is we need to bring our ham underneath and then this will simulate the curve on the back of your body. Now we can come up here and we can line up the two last corners and also make sure that this is square with the grain. What I've done is I've gone over to the uh, ironing board and I steamed and I pressed this along with the curve. So now I can come in here and I can get these corners going at a 45 degree angle. Since I'm working with a dress form, I'm going to go ahead and just take this over to the dress form and do a test fit really quick. I'm going to pin this at the side seam and center back and just make sure I like the position and placement of the pocket on my client. So I did a fitting back to my client and I noticed I needed just a little bit of room on that top edge so I took these outside top corners and I pushed them in ever so slightly. So you can see now when you set it down here on the tabletop and I invert this you can see it's easy to get your hand inside of there. And then what I'll do is I'll mark two new corners back to my pattern piece. I'm almost ready to go back and sew this. I just want to make sure on these long straightaway seams that nothing moves. So I'm going to do one more pin here at the side.
Okay, for sewing this, I have the, um, the yoke seam inverted so it's bowling downwards. And then I started with my threads long and I'll show you why. I also started right here at the top stitch from the pocket edge. And then I went down all the way around and back to this top. When I got here, I did a back tack. Then I continued doing my second row of stitching all the way across, back to the top, and I did a back tack here, and then I came and I ended here, and I left my strings long. And now from the front, I can carefully come down in here, cut my threads nice and short, and then I'll do the same on the back. All right, now that we have our pocket on there, take out your other back piece and place this right side up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the back crotch seams together, right sides together. Now for me, after I sew the two back pieces together, when I press them open, I wanna have this line meet perfect right in the middle. So it's making a perfect V right at the top. And to me, that's almost more important than lining up the raw edges up here. And let me show you how to do this. So come over here to the back crotch curve of both of your pieces. Now when we unfold them, if you were to come in here with a pencil, you can mark your half inch seam allowance right where it's crossing over that seam. and do the same thing for both layers. Now when I come back over here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take a pin from the back side and I'm poking it through right on that location. So this is right on the seam right at the half inch seam allowance. Then I can come over to the other layer and I'm going to put the pin through the exact same location on this layer as well. Now with the pin all the way pulled through, what I need to do is I need to move these layers until that pin is pointing straight up. When it's pointing straight up, then I know that those two locations are right on top of each other. Now I can come in here and I can pin this seam going in the direction that I'm going to be sewing from. So for instance, I'm going to start sewing here at the end seam. I'm going to make my way past the notches and head this direction. So I'm pinning towards the direction I'm sewing. And again, that pin is still pointing straight up. And now I want a cross pin coming along this way. Then I can take this pin out so it's not dangerous. Now I know with this pin coming across right here and this pin going right here that it's totally locked down and those two locations are right on top of each other. Start sewing from the end seams with a back tack and then follow your seam allowance all the way here to the waist and no back tack. Just in case your thread tension was a little too high, you can always relax it back out towards the waist seam. But we wanna have a back tack here because this is gonna be an area where you need lots of strength. Now we can look here on the inside and you can see that the two top stitch lines perfectly match together at center back. If you take a look here at your store-bought pants, you'll notice that the back crotch seam, they also made it a flat fell seam. So in production, this was three quarters of an inch seam allowance at the back crotch and they sewed them wrong sides together 
and then they rolled it and they have it so all of the um, seam allowances are encased inside of there along with the double top stitch. Now for testing our patterns we don't quite have to do all that work but if you want to simulate having this top stitch on here make sure that all of your seam allowances are going towards the wearer's left leg and then you can put a double top stitch all the way along this crotch seam. Now for me, I'm not going to put a double top stitch on here because I'm just doing a basic mock-up. But I do need to make sure that my seam allowances are pressed here towards the wearer's left leg. And then I'll steam and press this on the ironing table. Now remember, as you steam and press this location here at center back, that this is now a curve. And then when you come down to the tabletop, just be sure that you do not crush that curve. And you can always fold these pants wrong sides together. And for the upper layer, you can invert the yoke curve to maintain that shaping.